Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I have a clean and simple scene card to share with you using Unforgettable Birthday. So let's get started. This is the Unforgettable Birthday set, absolutely adorable as you can see. I have stamped the image with the elephant holding the balloon onto some smooth white cardstock using extreme black ink. I'm now colouring it with Copic markers and I'm starting off by using some warm greys for the elephant. So I'm mapping out where I think my darkest colours would be. So I'm starting off with a W7, just adding that more towards the left hand side. I'm thinking that my light source would kind of be more towards the top right hand side. So I'm focusing most of the darker colours towards the left hand side. I'm then blending that out with the W5. So I'm going over the areas that I've already coloured with the W7 and then blending that out and bringing it sort of further on into the image. I'm then doing the same thing with the W3. Just adding more of that colour into the image and then blending that with the W5. I can then go in with W1 which is my lightest shade. And then I forgot to add the W3 to his trunk. So I'm going back in with the W3 and then back in with the W1 again. And then I do jump back to the W3 because I felt like I wanted a little bit more darker areas. So I'm going back over some of those areas and then blending it out with the W1. And then I forgot his little tail there, so I'll go back in with the W5. And then I do go back in and just add a little bit extra darkness onto some of those darker areas. And I blend that out a little with the W1. Then for the ears, I'm using some quite bright pinks, but I'm going to dull them down a little bit. So I'm starting off with the RV55 and then I'm blending that out with the RV52. These are the shades that I'm going to be using in the balloon. So I wanted everything to kind of match a little bit, but I wanted it to look a little bit more believable that the elephant would have pink ears. So I'm dulling the pink down slightly using the W1 and the W0. So just going over those areas and then I do go back in with that RV52 just to add a little bit more pink because I did want them to be quite pink. But the W kind of over the top does just, like I said, dull them down a little bit and kind of blends them in with the image a little bit better. So then for the balloon, I am using some quite sort of more vibrant and darker pinks. So I'm starting off with the RV69 and just going around all of the outside edges with that. Adding again a little bit more darkness towards the bottom left hand side. I did go over the image slightly over the line on the top right hand side and I'm going to sort that out a little bit later. For the time being I'm leaving it where it is. So then I'm blending out with the RV66 and I did find that I struggled a little bit to blend those two colours together. So I'm going in with the RV19 which is a little bit of a brighter shade but it is a little bit darker. <laughs> So then I went back in with the RV66, I'm now going in with the RV55 and then the RV52. And as you can see the RV66 and the RV55 are quite a lot different in shade. And sometimes they blend really nicely together in smaller areas and sometimes it's a little bit harder to blend them and this balloon is quite big. So I'm going in tip to tip with the marker. So I've got the RV55 is the one in my right hand. <laughs> hand and I'm dabbing that onto the RV66 and that's picking up some of the colour onto that nib so that when I then colour with it on the image I'm going to have kind of like a blend between the two shades and that's just going to help to blend out the image a little bit does not hurt the tips of the markers but I do tend to kind of just wipe that off on a scrap piece of paper just to get rid, rid of any of the residual colour and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the RV55 and the RV52 because again they're quite a lot different in shade and I do want there to be a really nice kind of a light highlight on this balloon but I do want there to be quite a nice blend between them as well so I'm just doing the exact same thing. It did take me a little while to colour in this balloon but I am quite happy with the results in the end. 
So just going back over with that RV55 and then I can go in again with the RV52 and just finish off the image. I'm then taking the coordinating dynamics and the kind of string for the balloon is a bit enclosed if you do line it up with the elephant and the balloon it does cut perfectly fine but it took me so long to color in that balloon I didn't want to leave it to chance so I've cut myself kind of like a template from some craft cardstock and I'm using craft purely just because it's a little bit easier to see on camera so what I'm doing is I'm placing that over the image and I'm going to line it up so that there is the same amount of white space around the image I'm holding that down with some low tack tape and then when I pop the die on top it's just going to pop in kind of like a puzzle piece so then I know that it's going to cut exactly where I have kind of placed that template so I ran that through my die cutting machine and because it's cutting through two layers of cardstock it did cut out perfectly but it did just take a little bit longer for me to pop that out because I use craft cardstock I did get a few fibers from the craft cardstock around the edge and I'm just going to run my finger around those to get to kind of remove that and then I did cut another of the dies just so that I can pop that behind so that it's two layers just to give a little bit extra stability so for the background I have cut a panel of white cardstock using the stitched hexagon stacks dynamics and I'm going to use this to add some clouds onto so I'm taking the cloud stencil and I'm just holding that down with some post-it tape and I have added some kind of low tack tape on the back of that hexagon piece onto a scrap piece of paper so that that is held in place as well while I do the ink blending I thought it'd be fun to add pink clouds <laughs> instead of blue clouds today just to match in with the pinks in the balloon so I'm using picked raspberry distress ink and an ink blending brush and I placed the first cloud where I wanted it to be and then added the ink above it I can then change the direction of the clouds what is great with this stencil is it's got four sides but you can also flip it so that they're the opposite so actually you've got eight sides really although I end up just using three today so I'm going back in with the ink and then I can blend that up and this time I'm not going to blend up all the way to the top of that cloud so that I've got some lightness on the top of those kind of fluffy bits of the cloud so I can just go down this panel rotating the stencil as I go and I want each layer to be slightly different which is great with these kind of stencils because you've got lots of different options so some I'm kind of doing at an angle and some I'm doing straight and I do tend to tap off the excess ink onto the scrap bit of paper there behind I just find that it gives me a slightly smoother blend so I can just finish off here at the bottom and because I didn't want that to be completely white I'm going back in with the ink and just adding that around the bottom piece. So again it just all blends nicely together. I then wanted to add a little bit of extra interest onto this panel so I'm taking the ink pad and I'm just smushing that down onto some non-stick sheet adding a little bit of water to it and then I'm going to take a paintbrush and just mix those two together and then I can splatter that onto the panel it's just like I said going to give a little bit extra interest onto the very clean and simple card. So just tapping that paintbrush with my finger and the great thing is because I'm using ink rather than paint or something like that that's going to dry really quickly. So next I'm going to work on my sentiment and I've placed the sentiment from the Unforgettable Birthday set in the Mini Misty and I'm going to stamp that down onto some black licorice cardstock and I do want to heat emboss this so I'm prepping the cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and removing any excess powder with a brush. I want to have my sentiment on two separate lines so I'm taking some post-it tape and I'm placing that over the word birthday. I'm then going to ink up the rest of the sentiment using Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink that works perfectly with heat embossing. So just inking that up really well and then making sure to remove that post-it tape before I stamp that down. 
I'm then applying some white embossing powder, tapping off the excess, and then I can heat set that until it's completely melted. Now, in an ideal world, I would have stamped both sentiments like parts of the sentiment at the same time and used one piece of cardstock but that cardstock did get a little bit dirty with a few kind of white specks on it so I ended up stamping the rest of the sentiment on a separate piece of cardstock. So this time I'm masking off the part of the sentiment that I've already stamped and just inking up the word birthday. I did clean this kind of stamp before I stamped the rest of it but Unfortunately Versamark ink it really is quite sticky and I didn't clean it perfectly so what I'm doing is once I add the embossing powder it's going to stick a little bit to where I don't want it to be so then I'm going to take a dry brush and I'm just going to remove that embossing powder and it comes off really easily and because I didn't actually stamp it with the Versamark ink it's not going to leave any marks on that cardstock or anything. So I can just remove that embossing powder and then again I can heat set that until it's completely melted. I'm then taking the Itty Bitty Strips Dynamics and I'm going to cut the sentiments into strips. And I do just cut off the excess on either side of those strips just to cut them down a little bit further. I'm adding some thin foam tape onto the back of the cloud piece. I've removed the backings and now I'm placing that down onto an A2 size white card base. So that's a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I've then added some thin foam tape onto the back of the image and then I can pop that on top. I'm just kind of hovering it in place to start with. I wanted you to be able to see the shape nicely, the hexagon shape in the background. So I didn't want the image to be kind of like completely in the middle. So I'm making sure that that top of the balloon is kind of further away enough from that corner at the top. Once I'm happy with the placement, I can press that down. And then I'm adding some more thin foam tape onto the back of the sentiment strips. But this one here at the top is going to overlap that balloon string. So I'm adding foam tape onto the right hand side and then a tiny little bit on the left. Just so then I've got that gap in the middle where that balloon string is. And then I can place that down. And then I can do the same thing for the birthday word. I'm adding some white gel pen highlights using a 0.8 white jelly roll pen. I'm just adding one on the elephant and then one on the balloon. Sometimes I add too many and I kind of regret it. So I'd rather add too little and think I could have added more than regret adding too many. And then remember that little bit of Copic marker that went outside the lines. I'm just taking the white pen and I'm just going to go over that area. I do go over it a couple of times just to make sure that it covers up really nicely. And so that is the card finished for today. Really clean and simple, but I really like how those clouds work with the pinks in the image as well. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.